Welcome everybody. Uh, today we're going to do a little panel to talk about some of the collaboration projects that we've done with Vans and our collaborators. Then next to me is Carol and Humberto, co-owners and co-founders of Opening Ceremonies. That was started in 2002. Carol and I started Opening Ceremony because we came up with this idea of all the things we loved. We love traveling, we love eating, we love getting massages. And we said, <laughs> what, how can we come up with a job where we could do all these things that we love? So we said, if we visit a new country every year and we get the countries to pay for our trips to go to these different places, this will be our store. And so every year we went to a new country and discovered new brands and brought it back into our store. So we became really accidentally known for discovering a lot of really fun stuff. And Mr. Chris Gibbs on the far end uh, at the helm of Union Los Angeles. Um, can you kind of tell us about your early experiences with Vans uh, growing up in, a, in an area where there probably wasn't a Vans retail store? My dad actually was a studio musician, um, somehow living in Canada, which is a weird one. But he traveled to LA and he brought me home like a skateboard and that kind of started a whole new thing for me. Um, so my first experience with Vans was probably through my local skate shop. So fellow Californians growing up in the suburbs just slightly outside of Los Angeles, you guys, what were your guys' first experiences with Vans growing up? Did you guys have stores in your uh, neighborhoods? Um, I grew up in the valley, the San Fernando Valley, so true valley girl. And the first um, store I went to was on Topanga Canyon Boulevard. If anyone remembers, it was a freestanding little Vans shop, super cute. And I just remember driving by and asking my mom and, you know, she, went in and it was the one thing I remember like wanting to slip on checkerboards and that was the first pair of vans I got. We grew up with not too much money growing up in Highland Park and for some reason my sister had a lot of vans underneath her bed. And I remember going and looking at her shoes and she would always get mad at me if I touched her stuff and <laughs> somehow with no money somehow she had a lot of vans underneath her, her bed. Yeah, I think one of the best memories is that smell of vans, it still smells the same. And you, Ted, what was your first being in Japan, Tokyo? How, what was your first experiences with the brand? Yeah, um, first contact with vans was during my, I was uh, 14, 15, something. I bought for men, mentor. So did you buy, you, you bought a pair of used but, shoes from yeah, your mentor shoes. or new? It used. A uh, whole crushed um, shoe goo, yeah. fix it, then 500 I bought. That's uh, first time uh, in a band's high top. Yeah. For me, I remember there was a girl in my junior high who had the, I mean, I didn't know that it was called the era, and they were red, and she was just someone that, you know, her style. I went to a private school actually, so the one thing that differentiated the uniform was what you could wear. And so she was just, she was super cool, and I was like, I need those. And so the red eras were the first ones that I ever bought. I didn't wear eras till I moved to California. Um, I feel like it's kind of the most authentic skate shoe, California, classic, indelible um, item. And I kind of just started to embrace my California lifestyle and got into it. But I, I probably didn't wear one until I moved out here. And I, didn't move out here until I was 28, so. If you're in Bali and you run into some dude or chick and she's wearing a pair of Vans, there's a kind of connection there, like, oh shit, hi. Yeah, my favorite is the imprint on the ground. And you realize you're in some place, some far space away from home and you see that all of a sudden you're, there's a natural feeling like, okay, there's somebody else here I'm connected to in some way, it's nice. Why choose the era when you're working on some of the collaborations that are up on the screen? It's the perfect canvas. So as an artiste, it gives you like a, a really uh, great canvas to kind of apply your version of what, you know, your interpretation of what bands might mean to you. I feel like it's one of the most 
authentic shapes and it's instantly recognizable as a Vans classic. So it is the perfect canvas to work on. And somehow, even with the cut lines, it doesn't actually disrupt the artwork. I mean, it's been copied so many times and I feel like it's, it really is just the perfect proportion. What about you, Ted? Yeah, totally agree. You know, timeless piece and good canvas, yeah. When you guys are working with it or you're looking at it, do you guys see a lot of its, the skate origins in it? It's the skate shoe, the skate shoe, not a skate shoe. But when I see it, I think of like, you know, all the classic pictures of the guys cruising down the, the hills, I guess, not right. too far from here. When you see that, those lines, you automatically are taken to like the early 70s and, and, and what was happening here. The next question I kind of want to get into is maybe a little bit deeper in your guys' the designs that you guys have used. I think, you know, one of the things we always try to bring to your team is how far we could push a material, how far we can push an application on the midsole. You know, I think some of the examples have been really kind of seeing how we could um, take something that might be classic but exaggerated. So I think the cord is a good example where we go with a really thick whale. You know, for us, we saw like a massive, people were going crazy for those shoes, which was super cool. Yeah. And women, you know, I think women were equally going as crazy as men, which is cool. Yeah, it's interesting. We have a stronger women's business in bands than men's. Uh, yeah, yeah. I always uh, think about um, by respecting the bands uh, for uh, identity, always. I wanted to keep the original form as much as possible. There was a point where uh, Vans was taking a unique uh, place in the market by getting, making shoes, manufacturing shoes, and making the decision to not sell to wholesalers, but to create their own stores. And by creating those stores, they plopped all these stores around Southern California, one of them being in Santa Monica. And this store is the store that the local Zephyr team decided to get the, add the Vans shoes as a part of their uniform. And for us, I think this is a very significant change in the company because this changed the direction of the company. At the beginning of the company, it wasn't focused on skateboarding, it was focused on just make, manufacturing quality shoes and selling affordable shoes by removing the wholesaler and just selling direct and with all these stores. So the thinking was different in the beginning, but just making shoes for people was the focus. So at a certain point, these kids in this region adopted the shoe and started skating on the shoe and then started getting global notoriety. And Vans took notice of this and ended up connecting with these guys and then built a shoe to help them perform what they were doing. Um, so I'm kind of curious for you guys, was there a point in your guys' career where a certain person or a certain group helped you guys change your trajectory in life? So I think my personal trajectory, and for better or for worse, the store's trajectory under my tutelage changed after my first trip to Japan. I saw the way they treated something that to me was like, oh, it's just a t-shirt, like we just fold it up and who cares if it's not folded perfectly because it's a $20 t-shirt. But when you go to Japan, they had it very beautifully presented and on a marble table and it kind of elevated this thing that I kind of took for granted. So when I came back, I was like, I want to do that for here. I want to elevate streetwear. I want to show this um, thing. So like kind of unapologetically, a lot of how I kind of changed union and still run it to this day, is largely guided and informed by my early trips to Japan and, and seeing brands like Ted and, and their stores and kind of how they did it. And I took a lot of uh, direction from that, I guess. Starting opening ceremony with no fear and with the acceptance that things would go wrong, I think was probably a big change for us. I mean, we were both, I don't know, 26, 27 years old. We always had 
going to work for another corporate job as a safety for us? Um, C.L. Stasek, um, uh, like uh, his word into um, some skateboard magazine, uh, he said the uh, concrete potential. Uh, I love the, the word for me. So I like the word, the potentials um, very, you know, like, but the potential yeah, of concrete. Yeah, potential is concrete, so. In childhood, I think it's when you guys were picking the vans and, and everything, I think you were chosen, you were finding it through skateboarding, same, you were finding it through skateboarding, and this aspect that you guys weren't necessarily with skateboarding, um, and you were getting the shoes, did you find that the brand itself was open to others outside of maybe what was popular at that time, where skateboarding was in our childhood. We grew up in Sangira Valley, a big Asian and Latino population. And I think vans were on all our feet. And I don't think that a lot of these people were skaters. I relate it more to culture than I do. And I think skateboarding is obviously a big part of culture. Yeah. But it has to do with music and Art and I mean it's a huge part of I think music so it's definitely embedded in culture and I think that the skate portion is a huge part of that culture. Well I think it's interesting you said that before the era came about when the company started it was about making great quality shoes that was accessible and democratic and I feel like the experience for me not like coming from it from obviously it escape point of view was that it felt inclusive, even though obviously it's rooted in, in the sport, that obviously it is part of everyone's wardrobe and you would see it everywhere. And I think that, that there aren't very many brands that exist that permeate um, the spectrum where I think you, know, you have people in suburbs or shopping in malls and, and getting their first fans. And, I think it is the brand that you have and that you have emotional connections to, all the pairs that you have. Any brand out there wants to be that. Information is so quick and so um, disposable today that we always try to use our platform and our store to slow things down and tell a story in a more succinct and more authentic way. Thank you guys all for coming. Thank you guys for coming, I appreciate it.